Welcome to the final part of this mini-series, where we will learn how to interact with articulations. In this tutorial, we will focus on setting the joint state and applying commands to a card pole. This will serve as the foundation for upcoming videos on reinforcement learning. By the end of this tutorial, you will understand how to spawn an articulated robot, configure its state, and control it with commands. The structure of the code is quite similar to what we have seen in the previous tutorials. We begin by configuring and initializing the simulation app. Next, we import the necessary modules. In this tutorial, you will notice two new ones, Articulation and Cardpole CFG, which we will explore in detail shortly. As before, we design the scene by adding a ground plane, a light, and an X-form, which consists of two origin positions. Unlike the earlier tutorials where we used rigid object CFG for a cone, or deformable object CFG for a mesh cuboid, here we directly spawn a USD file from the Nucleus server. This file is pre-configured using a predefined object, Cardpole CFG, which is an instance of the assets articulation CFG class. The configuration file can be found under cardpole.py. It is loaded through the initialization function, which references the Python file directly. The articulation CFG class contains all the essential details for the Cardpole, including its spawning strategy, default initial state, actuator models for the joints, and additional meta information. The cart pole itself is composed of three main parts, the cart, the pole, and the rail. The cart moves freely along the rail using a prismatic joint while the pole rotates about the cart using a revolute joint. The articulation route is defined as the entire robot itself. To spawn the cart pole in the scene, we create an instance of the articulation class. By passing the predefined configuration object to its constructor, the cart poles are spawned at the specified prim paths. If requested, I can provide a detailed guide on designing a custom card pole, covering important aspects like setting physics, attributes, and configuring joint properties. Let me know in the comments if I should cover that. After designing the scene, we define the run simulator function, where the simulation is reset periodically. Similar to rigid bodies, articulation objects have root states, which are first cloned and then offset by their origins to align with the simulation world frame. These updated root states are then written into the simulation. Additionally, articulation objects have joint positions and velocities. These are also cloned, with a slight randomization applied to the joint positions for variability. Once updated, the joint states are written to the simulation. Finally, we clear any internal buffers and caches using the reset method, ensuring a clean and consistent state for the simulation. Random efforts are generated using a randomized function and scaled by 5.0 to introduce dynamic movement. These efforts are applied with a set joint effort target method and written to the simulation using write data to sim. The simulation is then stepped forward with sim step updating all entities. The robot's internal buffers are refreshed using the update method to synchronize its state with the latest simulation results. Finally, we start the simulation in the main function and run the simulation of two card poles that reset every 500 simulation steps, with each step applying a random joint position to simulate dynamic movement. In this tutorial, we have learned how to spawn and control a card pole articulation, set its root and joint states, apply random joint commands, and update its state within the simulation. This setup provides the foundation for more advanced simulations and future reinforcement learning applications. If you have found the tutorial helpful and want to see more, consider subscribing. Also comment on what you would want to see next. Thank you. Bye.